I don't sit there and have one size fits all. I have a 1791 triple jumper and I have a 1748 triple jumper. And so we'll progress through some of these drills um, and they literally go from um, simplistic, easy drills to more complex. I mean, the only thing that we may do is you add intensity, okay? You may add some weight with the weight vest or something like that, but we're going from very general uh, training to a lot more specific as we go later in the year. Good. See, as soon as you guys land, what happens? You move, right? Yeah. So that's good. That's what we want to do. Okay? And so, but are we going to run like that? Now we want to get it more complicated because when we're running, what we're doing, we're running in max velocity like sprint mechanics, right? So they're going to be coming from here. So if I'm running, and I'm running with max velocity sprint mechanics, I'm coming here and moving on. So I want you guys to bring your knee up. Okay? And now... Yeah, so just move over the foot, just like you're, no, you don't do that. So, be able to drop down a little bit, you're kind of a little too active with this step, but let, let it come. Totally. Good, okay, pretty good. Good. What did, I didn't even have to cue them. What's the biggest thing we talked about? Postural integrity. Did they keep their postural integrity? Yes. They're right in position where they need to be. And so I didn't even need to say anything. All right. This time I want you guys, I want you to actually go like this and then tell me how it felt. So just. Okay. How did that feel? Weird. Okay. So automatically, I mean, we only been working for two minutes and getting out of position was weird. Okay? It looks like, it feels like you're sat there in the hole. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, go ahead. Okay. So he did it later. That's okay. Okay? But, but the thing was, it was abnormal for them. Okay? And sometimes that's not a bad thing. You know, motor learning, if you're talking to them, they want you to do it, they want them to do it incorrectly so that they can learn it better. So they know, that felt weird. That's not where I want to be. Okay? Alright, good. So now I'm going to have you guys step up. So you're going to go, you're going to the left, so you're going to go here, okay? Good, good. Pushed it right off. That was perfect. Okay? That was really good. Okay, so you got a little bit, yeah, one more time. That's all right. Good. Okay, so it's, he's moving forward, he's pushing over. <coughs> all right. So now I'm going to add a, a little bit of complication. You're going to do the same thing. At the end, you're going to drive your free leg, thigh, or you're going to drive your free knee. You're gonna, you want this thigh parallel to the ground. So it's going to look like. Good. Very nice. Very good. Now, we're just, he did exactly what I wanted him to do. So we would do that two or three times, and then I would say, use your arms. Okay, but I, we don't want to confuse him too much. We just want him to focus in on it, because he was like a toy soldier. Nice. Okay, so we want to be aggressive. What we got? Oh, high jumping. Or pole vaulting. <laughs> I don't know. That's all right. I'm giving them too much, see? I, I went to the arm. So that's okay, though. All right? That's okay. So right now, we would just be like, okay, let's focus in on the free leg. He got that correct. He got that done. And then we've added complexity to it. Okay? One more time. So, boom. Good. Very nice. Quick learner. Quick study. Yeah, 
Nice. Textbook. That was good. That's really, really nice. They're able to kind of get through the, through the positioning and stuff like that. So we taught them how to land. We taught them how to get off the ground. We taught them how to do those things. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to teach them to land from a little bit of altitude. Okay, I want to teach them how to kind of get that in front. All right. You guys are going to share this block. Okay. All right, and so a little bit, when you saw uh, Dr. Wolf from Rich North's uh, presentation, you saw that 0.5 or 1 point meter kind of thing. And we do, this is the one thing I do measure every year. Okay, because I want to see the highest level of response that I can get from my athletes for each one. Because if I just tell both of my athletes, okay, you guys are going to do box drops off of that, that might not be sufficient for one versus the other. Okay, so you don't even need something more advanced as uh, a force platform or something like that. There's cheaper and lesser ones, but you can tell by the response of the athlete. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. So solid landers. Okay. Very flat foot. Nice response. Not too mo too much amortization. Okay. That's good. Good. Okay. We'll tell you on that one. It's all right though. But I mean, I, this is when I'm being nitpicky and specific. All right. Very nice. And then you can you can tell them hear the rhythm. Okay. All right. You guys graduated. You did a good job. And now we're gonna get a little response off the ground. Okay. This is the cue you kind of given given the athlete. All right. So keeping neutrality in our ankles. Not only are we getting a little bit of response off the ground, we're able to put the foot closer to our center of mass, create less breaking. All right, we don't get that hamstring to pull. That's not the purpose of the hamstring. The hamstring is made for flexion. It's not supposed to be pulling yourself forward. Okay, so that's why it's really important to teach these, these key components. All right, what's speed? Speed is stride length and stride frequency, right? Okay, how do we increase stride length? We create more power into the ground. And that allows our stride length to be preferred. Okay, that is done by efficient, efficient movement. Very nice. Very good. So, we, I mean, just looking at these two, didn't say anything. Did we, have, did we have two different athletes on that? We had a stiffer athlete, kind of like the high jumper, then we had one who had a little bit more bend, right? Try to get some height. I didn't say anything, right? But that, as a coach, you're getting response right back on what kind of athlete am I working with right now? A little bit more. So, so again, I have to work with these two athletes, okay? My stiffer athlete, I need on a little bit of a higher box. I already know that. Okay, my athlete who gets a little bit more bend, we can stay on a lower box. But these are two athletes, let's say they're both eight meter long jumpers, or 17 meter triple jumpers, I have to train them differently. Okay, you just saw it on the response on the ground. So, and, and just look at the maturation of the two athletes as far as being trained. So he, he was coached well, so he knows that to respond back, bring his toe back up, okay? And naturally, it's got good spring and good stiffness, but still needs to learn that concept of bringing the foot to the foot. Much better. Okay, and that, and so those are the cues that you're trying to use, and, and, and we'll, say, we'll say why that's important. Not just because we're trying to teach the muscle stiffness and that kind of stuff, okay? We look and, and we see that in max velocity training and in acceleration. Okay, if the athlete just jabs their foot and sticks it out, what's going to happen? Are we breaking or are we, what do we do? We're breaking. Uh, that's a terrible setup for a foot. All right, if I'm jabbing at the ground and I have my foot plantar flex, I'm breaking. I want to minimize that breaking. So the great athletes, 
Low heel recovery, active push into the ground. Okay? And guys, these things carry over. We've just learned the basic core principles of the group. Okay? Now, we're going to learn a little bit. We're going to get into some multi-jumps and some more specific kind of drills.